It's Saturday, and that means pizza night. But for us, that means making homemade pizza. And your pizza dough is basically the same as your bread dough, which is the same as my bagel dough, which is the same as my dough for everything. And uh, we add a little bit to the pizza dough to just make it taste more pizza-ish. We'll get to that, but we're starting off with got our last packet of yeast. I I bought a ton of yeast when the store had it on sale and they were just getting rid of a whole bunch and it hadn't expired yet and I can't believe I'm down to the last packet. I don't really believe in expiration dates per se except for yeast and baking powder. We start out with some warm water in the bowl. And no, I'm not really measuring any of this because I've done it before so many times and um, Basically, when I'm kneading the dough, I kind of know what I want it to feel like. So, I could have more water or less water, but I'm just going to adjust the amount of flour to make the dough feel like what I want it to feel like. So, we have some warm water in there. I'm going to put in just a tiny little smidge of sugar to feed the yeast. Uh, you want to activate your yeast. You want it to be alive and growing and feeding on that yummy sugar. You just sprinkle your packet of yeast. I'll show you. Sprinkle your packet of yeast over the top. And then we're just gonna let it sit there. Hopefully it's gonna start to be like a little bubbly and foamy and we're gonna find that the yeast is actually still alive and working. Because if it's not, we're not making dough. One time long ago, I made a loaf of bread with yeast that was dead. And the bread came out hard as a brick, literally a brick. And it was a brick that would not come out of the pan. So I had to throw the whole pan away, the brick and all. It's very disappointing. Okay, so your basic components for dough are water, yeast, salt, and flour. That's your basic bread. You can add warm milk. If you're making softer dinner roll type deals, you can add eggs. If you're making an egg bread, you can add um, some kind of fat, you know, oil, butter, uh, because that'll give it a different um, consistency. I think with um, pizza dough, you know, you want it to be chewy, like a bagel. Pizza dough is not supposed to be like Wonder Bread. I put olive oil in my pizza dough because it is my belief that the oil helps the gluten molecules align or something like that. I read this somewhere and it helps make for a nice chewy crust because that is what you want. Um, gluten, I know some people have issues with gluten. Blessedly, I do not. I love gluten. Uh, gluten is the protein in flour and that's what gives it the, the chewiness that bagels and pizza crust are supposed to have. So I will be putting some olive oil in here. Um, the way I start all my doughs is I make a poolish, which some people call a sponge. So basically what I do is I have the warm water and a little bit of sugar and I put the yeast in, get the yeast going. Then I put in a little bit of salt and a little bit of flour, stir it all around. It's not thick yet. It's not like a dough. It's kind of like um, pancake batter, you know, which is much runnier. And then I just put it aside for a few hours. And you can leave it up to about, I think they say 24 to 36 hours. If you go too long, your yeast is going to die. So I've had that happen. Um, but you're basically letting the yeast kind of do its thing. It kind of bubbles around and it rises up. And um, it's like enzymes are like doing magic. And I think it's supposed to... Um, improve the flavor of the dough and cut down on how much kneading kneading you have to do. I actually like kneading bread dough. I enjoy it. I used to not like it because the directions always say knead for 10 minutes. It's like 10 minutes is a long time when you're just standing there kneading the dough. But now I've really learned to enjoy it and I get very into it and I just it's like a zen thing. It's just like relaxing. You feel the motion. You feel the nice smoothness of the dough. And I have a very active fantasy life so I just like go into make-believe places in my head so anyway you make this like runny batter kind of deal set it aside for a while and then when you're ready to make your dough haul it back out and 
basically you add enough flour to give it the you know the the thick dough consistency that you want and then you put it out on your kneading surface with some more flour and you get your hands off flour and you do your kneading so I will add um, some olive oil to it and I will actually add some garlic powder because I like my pizza dough to have that extra garlicky flavor so it doesn't just taste like pr plain bread and I'll probably add some oregano to the dough itself too and other times I've added sprinkle cheese to it you know Parmesan cheese and the green you know what I'm talking about um, to add flavor to the crust as well I just don't happen to have that in the house right now so right now I'm gonna put in some salt and some flour to get it going as a poolish and put it aside and then we'll bring it back later and make it into the pizza dough. Then, um, you know, once you have your dough, you let it rise until it doubles in size. That's usually about an hour. Then you punch it down, you knead it again, and then I'll spread it out in the pan to make the pizza crust, and I always pre-bake my pizza crust. I know when you go to the pizza parlor, they're not using a pre-baked crust, obviously. Like, you've seen them, like, flipping the dough and spinning it around, and the raw dough goes down, and the sauce and the cheese go on, and boom, it's in the oven, and everything's fine. But when I've tried to do it without pre-baking the crust, the crust never cooks all the way. Maybe because my crust is thicker because I'm not spinning it up in the air. And it just doesn't bake. And you know, pizza with raw dough crust, not tasty. Blech, no, no good. So I always pre-bake my crust to make sure it's really cooked. And that takes, I don't know, 10 minutes in the oven. Pull it out, then you put your sauce on and your cheese and your toppings and back in the oven. Um, for the sauce, what am I using for pizza sauce? I'm just using whatever jarred spaghetti sauce I have. And I have um, sauce that I got free with couponing. And to me, really, the only difference between spaghetti sauce and pizza sauce is oregano. If you want your spaghetti sauce to taste like pizza sauce, add oregano. Okay, so we're going to add some flour out of the end of that bag. We're going to put in some salt. Stir it around. be a little bit thicker than that so I'm gonna add a little bit more flour from my new bag and obviously I'm not really measuring since I hardly ever do when I'm making a brand new recipe I do measure but once I've done something a few times I kind of don't measure anymore and usually things turn out pretty well usually so I'm gonna put a little olive oil in how much olive oil if you were measuring Amy how much would you be putting in I don't know, three tablespoons, a third of a cup, something like that. Blip. That much. Okay, so the poolish is ready, so we're going to add more flour and knead our dough. And no, I normally do not wear bright blue latex gloves for kneading bread dough. I'm wearing the gloves today because I banged my knuckles the other day when I was uh, cleaning house. So I kind of have like these scabs on my knuckles. So I have band-aids on and I didn't want to knead the dough and get like dough in the band-aids and my band-aid knuckle germs into the dough. So I figured I'm just gonna put on gloves so nobody's grossed out. So here's my poolish. It got all liquidy and bubbly and that is in fact oregano floating around in the top because I sprinkled that on at the end. It's got the garlic in it and it's kind of doing its weird thing here that it does but it's looking like it's supposed to which is like all bubbly and active and the yeast is you know going to town. So, hmm. so I'm just gonna pour some flour in kind of mix it about until um, till I feel like it feels firm enough that I can put it out on the counter and start to knead it. Um, I have watched Gordon Ramsay make dough and I've watched Jamie Oliver make dough and they don't do it this way. They had um, big old pile of flour on the on their surface and they made a little well in it and then they put the liquid into the well and then kind of incorporated the flour and I've tried it that way but every time I do it 
Like my flower wall breaks down and the liquid starts running out and flowing across the counter. Like this is a lot of dough. Woo! I've never done it with gloves before. Fun. All right, so I'm gonna put some flour out on the surface, lots and lots. This dough is, oops, pretty runny. And we're just gonna knead it and, and um, I'm just gonna knead it and keep incorporating more flour until it feels right. Um, soft, but not too soft. Not too firm, nice and stretchy and elasticy and just lovely. Then, um, yeesh. Then, see, with kneading, this is still pretty liquidy. I'm gonna incorporate a lot more flour. This is gonna make lots of pizza crust. Um, you just roll it towards you and kind of push it back out. But I need a lot more flour with this. Not really. Oh, it's so, it's weird. It sticks to the latex gloves in a weird way. Hmm, this is a very interesting experience. Yeah, you go. Oh, let's put a whole lot more flour into this mixture. Alrighty. There we go. All right, so you push and roll it back, push and roll, push, roll, turn, push and roll. It's a very, um, it's a very natural motion. It's very, like, kind of like soothing and zen and, you know, and I do, like I said, I have a very active fantasy life. So, here I am, kneading bread. And who comes along but Daniel Craig? And he's hungry for some homemade pizza. That's the kind of fantasy I'm talking about. So anyway, we'll need this for about 10 minutes. Incorporating the flour as we go. It smells garlicky and oregano-y. I'm going to Okay, I think I have a little helper joining me. I'm going to All right, get some flour on your hands. All floured up. All floured up. And we need. And I don't really need. I just like pushing it down. Just... Levi, I have a joke for you. What? Knock, knock. Like... Interrupting cow. Moo. 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 Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. <laughs> funny. All right, so here is our blob of kneaded dough and it's got the um, oregano worked into it. And <laughs> we're going to let it rise now. It's not Play-Doh. This is not Play-Doh. All right, we're, <laughs> we're going to let it rise now. Leave it alone! Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's our risen pizza dough. I think I have left it rising for about an hour and a half. So that is definitely some active yeast there. I'm very pleased with the rise. So now we're going to punch it down to get the air out of it and then we're going to knead it again. Then if you were going to make um, just regular bread, you would put it in your pan and then let it rise again. But for pizza dough, we don't want it to rise again because we don't want like a thick, puffy, bready pizza crust, right? You want it pretty thin and, you know, kind of crispy and, you know, not like crispy like a cracker, but you know what I'm saying. You know what pizza dough is like. You don't want like this thick bread. So we don't let it rise again we're going to knead it and then we are going to spread it out on a cookie sheet and then we're going to do our pre-baking so 
Watch this, it's fun. This is fun. The punching down is fun. Wasn't that fun? All right, wait, let me get a little flour for our surface. We get all the dough out. This is going to make, I venture to say three pizza crusts. Um, which is good because if you're going to all the trouble to make it, why not make a bunch at once? and then just put the others aside. What I do, I'll, I'll bake, you can, you, can, um, you can refrigerate the dough if you want or freeze the dough to make it into pizza crust later. Or what I do, uh, because I find it easier, is just to bake three pizza crusts and then whatever I don't want to use right away, I'll wrap it up in some bags and then I put it in my chest freezer so that it's just ready to go flour everywhere, then it's ready to go the next time I want to make pizza, which is very, very easy just to be able to pull out that um, pre-baked homemade pizza crust. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so we're kneading again, and then we're going to spread it in our pan. Alright, here we have one already pressed out in the pan, ready to go, so I'm going to pop that in the oven at 350, and it only has to bake for like seven or eight minutes. It doesn't have to bake a whole lot because remember it's going to bake more after you top it and you you know put it in the oven again. So this is going in the oven. I divided the dough into three so I have two more blobs of dough left and I'll show you the exciting process of how to spread the dough out in your pan. Um, we'll do two more. So um, you know I don't you know I'm not a professional pizza chef so I don't throw it up in the air. I'd like to be able to do it it looks like it's so cool and I feel like, wow, if they can learn it, I can learn it. I think I even watched a YouTube tutorial on it once, but, you know, phew! Ah, it's kind of scary. You know, it's like on I Love Lucy when it lands on her head. Yeah, that would be me. So anyway, I'm not saying this is how you do it. I'm saying this is how I do this. So I just kind of hold it up and kind of like shake it and let the weight of it start to stretch it out a bit. And then I just plop it on my pan. And then I just start to spread and spread and spread. Now I did spray the cookie sheet first with um, cooking spray so it wouldn't stick when we cut it and try to get it out of the pan. In a real pizza place, I don't believe they are using cooking spray. I think they um, will dust the pan with cornmeal and that kind of creates this barrier layer to, to make the pizza not stick. You don't want to dust it with flour because that makes this kind of like like gluey, kind of, it's not good. But I don't have any cornmeal. I don't think I've ever, I think I've done it that way once maybe, if ever. So I just put a little spray and we just push, push, push. So, you know, your dough is a little bit, um, it's a little bit elastic y, which you want, right? So it does spring back a little bit while you're pushing it, but you just basically you just keep pushing it. And you try not to have any holes. You want it to have a relatively uniform thickness if you can. And you know, if it comes out kind of like not perfect looking, well that's okay because this is rustic. Mm -hmm. This is artisanal pizza. Rustic artisanal pizza. And that's so much better and fancier than anything you could get at a pizza parlor. That's it's fun. And remember, we have the garlic and the um, oregano is already embedded into the crust itself. And I will sprinkle some more um, oregano on at the end, too. Now, we were out in the garden while this was rising and we picked some more tomatoes. So I think I'm going to make one pizza with the regular sauce and cheese and then I think I'm going to make one with um, a layer of sliced tomatoes and some oregano and salt on top of that and then the cheese on top of that. Now if I wanted to make this, it, um, you know, as a loaf of bread, uh, well because it has garlic and oregano in it, I mean you could still make it, but you kind of fold it under like that, just kind of keep 
bending it under so it has like the little crease on the bottom. And then you just have this cute little artisanal blob that you can bake on a cookie tray. Um, with my homemade bread, I generally like to, to bake it as a blob on a cookie tray, but then my husband gets all, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about him. He's so weirdly picky. He wants it made in a loaf pan, so it's shaped like a normal loaf of bread that he can cut for sandwiches. I just feel like um, he's not appreciating my true genius when I am going out of my way to make this fabulous artisanal homemade bread for him. And he wants it, he wants me to make like Wonder Bread. And it's not gonna be Wonder Bread. And I don't wanna make Wonder Bread. I'm not trying to make bread that's super light and fluffy. That's not normal. That's really not what bread is supposed to be. I'm, I'm wanting to make bread the way I am imagining it should have been hundreds of years ago, and that was not super duper light fluffy, though I am using white flour. There we go, so there's another one ready to go in. All right, our two pizza crusts are slightly pre-baked out of the oven, and now we're going to top them. So, on one of them, we are going to put on some spaghetti sauce from the jar and we will just sprinkle a little more oregano on top of that which will make it taste like pizza sauce I promise you it will you don't want to put too much on because I've made that mistake in the past because then everything just slides off you don't really put a ton 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 of sauce you spread it around with the back of a spoon get a nice thin covering and then Put on some cheese. Try to make it even so we don't have a giant puddle anywhere. On this, this one, I'm going to put um, some tomatoes from the garden. So I cut up some tomatoes that I grew myself. So I'm gonna lay these across. And again, I will sprinkle on some garlic and some salt and oregano. And we'll see how this tastes. I think it will taste nice. I think it will have a fresh and delightful flavor. Um, I didn't grow any peppers this year. Because my little kids don't, I don't really like peppers and I really wanted to grow things in the garden that I thought they would eat, but now I'm really wishing I had a nice green pepper to cut up and put on this too, because I think that would be excellent. So now we're just taking our um, store brand shredded mozzarella that was on sale and we're going to spread it around. This is not the quickest thing to make because of the time that it takes, um, you know, to make and pre-bake your dough. But it's not, it's not really difficult. It's certainly not, it doesn't take that long. It's just, there's waiting time in between the steps because you have to let the dough rise and, you know, there's obviously several stages. So, um... So I'm not saying it's a meal you can throw together in five minutes, but if you do, um, if you do make some dough and, and pre-bake your crusts and have some crusts ready to go, then it really is an extremely quick and easy meal to throw together really quickly because then you just have your crust down and put your sauce and cheese on and you're good to go. It's really the making of the homemade crust that probably takes the longest. My helper is back! Just getting some water probably. Alright, now we'll put some cheese on the second one. It just has tomatoes all over it. 
All right, so we're just gonna sprinkle on some oregano and then pop this back into the oven. And you make pizza um, at a much hotter temperature than just regular baking. So I have the oven up to about 425 and they can 10 minutes maybe, we'll check it and then we'll be ready for dinner. So it's going in. So the cost for these two pizzas, let's estimate. I'd say for the two crusts, about a dollar. Uh, the sauce was free, because I got that free with coupons. The tomatoes are free because I grew them. The cheese was $1.67 a package, and I did not even use two full packages. So probably less than $3 worth of cheese. So $4 for the two pretty hefty sized pizzas. Uh, $2 each. So $4 for this dinner, uh, my older daughter's home tonight, so we're gonna feed five, and I know we will have leftovers because we've done this before, and I know we will have leftovers, so that's pretty frugal. I mean, that's a lot cheaper than getting pizza out, and oh, so much fun to make. Alrighty, and here's the first pizza out of the oven. It cooked really quickly. I'm gonna say maybe seven or eight minutes, and I think it looks pretty good. The other one should be out of the oven in a few minutes. I think it will take a little bit longer because the tomatoes are so juicy. Hey, we are going to do a taste test on pizza. No. no. There's one with tomato and one with this cheese. I'm going to take the cheese. Mom <laughs> is going to take the pasta too because I do not like tomato. And my parents will eat pasta. And the parents will eat the crust. The bite I just had was really good. This is amazing. This is you good. Have, I have how old you need this. Amazing thing I've emptied it in for a while. It's like something you get at a pizzeria. It's artisanal oh and rustic. Oh my god, so good. You guys like the crust? Alright, so is it a success? Yeah! Is this better than getting pizza at the pizza parlor? You said, oh uh, no. Stay at home to make pizza. That's right. Because this is really, 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 really good. It is really, really, really good. And really cheap. And really, really cheap. I'd say four dollars for two. This was two, like two bucks for this. Bye. 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 Everybody do the pizza dance of joy. Is that your pizza dance? Enjoy, Daddy?